scripture this morning is coming out of the 37th Psalm. Trust in the Lord and do good. Yes. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily shall thou be fed. Delight thou self also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Yeah. Yeah. May the Lord have a blessing to the Amen. reading and hearing of his holy word. Yeah. Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come this morning. We come with heads bowed and we come with humble hearts. We come, oh God, just to say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you just for another day of living. Yes. Thank you that you woke us up early this morning. Yes. Yes. Clothed in our right mind. Yes. A portion of our health and strength. Yes. And Lord, we come this morning just to say thank you. Thank you. Realizing that you didn't have to do it. Yes. But we're so grateful that you did. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we say thank you. Yes. Lord, we thank you that we had clothes our backs. We had shelter on our heads, food to blow on our table. Lord, we say thank you. All of these things that sometimes we so often take for granted. But Lord, we realize that some didn't have a bed to sleep in last night. Don't do it, Don't do it. But Lord, you blessed us. Yes, thank you, God. And we thank you, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you would. Forgive us of our sins and our misbehavior. And we ask, oh God, that you would just search our hearts. Give us a clean heart that we might be able to serve you. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, God. Lord, we ask that you would bless the sick right now. Lord, we know that you have healing in the heaven. Yes, Lord. Touch them right now. Right now, Lord. Let them know that they are not forgotten. Yes. Have mercy upon us. We need you in times like this. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Yes. Who died on the cross. That we might have the right to the tree of life. Lord, we thank you that he rose on that third day. Yes. And declared all power in his hands. Thank you, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless us. We bless this family. We ask that you would bless our pastor, oh God. Prop him up on every leading side. Have mercy upon us. We need you. We can't make it without you. We ask, oh God, that you would just go to the White House. Have mercy on us. Have mercy, Lord. We need you right now. And Father, when we've done all that we can do, Lord, when you call, we want to be somewhere listening to somewhere. Yeah. He's another place we have to have some Jesus. Let everyone say amen. 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 Say hallelujah, church. Come on, say hallelujah, church. You said God put us up this morning.
Good morning, church. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord once again. Uh, we know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. We got to know that God is in control of everything. And He knows all about us. He knows our up and our down. He knows where we've been. He also knows where we're going. He knows what we want, and He knows what we need. And I just I think He supply all of our needs according to His riches in glory. God is good, and all the time God is good. It is now time for our responsive reading. Uh, if you have a flyer uh, or a program, please. Uh, Take notice of the uh, of the program. The call of the service of communion. The service of communion. In his letter to the Corinthian Christians, the Apostle Paul said, "For I have received of the Lord." that which also are delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my fire, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same minute, he took the bread, took the cup, and when he had some, said, This cup, is the New Testament in my blood. Then do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In one man, we share and declare the good news of salvation when we observe the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. Now, I'm going to read my book. <laughs> in one man, do we share in declaring the good news of salvation? So we observe the audience of the Lord's Supper. For as all things you need to pray and drink this cup, you need to show the Lord's death to the Lord's But does his audience teach us to remember? Why is that our sins according to the Scriptures? In the death of Jesus sufficient? I'm sorry. Is the death of Jesus sufficient for the atonement of all people of all time? We are to remember concerning our sins. The blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sins. What are we to remember concerning our relationship to God through the death of His Son? We were exiled to God by the death. What are we to remember concerning our Savior's death? Christ also has the us the sins. The just and the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. What are we to remember concerning the barrier of the Lord? He was buried and then rose in the third day. What are we to remember concerning his resurrection? Knowing that he is raised up the Lord Jesus, and raised up the Lord also by Jesus, and shall present us with him. What are we to remember concerning the ascension into heaven? He was taken up and allowed to see him out of his sight, and while he was taken up,
I call Mr. Tuff to please stand. All Mr. Tuff to please stand. Amen. Please remain standing. We thank you for in our audience with your presence on today. As always, it is said that it's not, it is God's choice that you be here, and we, ask, we thank you for being obedient to the Holy Spirit. So we just like to say, you are welcome, welcome, welcome. You may be pleased. At this time, we have our announcement. As we go through this week, we should know when God measures a man, he puts the tape around his heart and not his head. Thank you and be blessed.
praise the Lord. It's giving time. We want to thank uh, Reverend Buford for that uh, prayer of giving. At any time, also, we're going to have another selection by the Sanctuary Choir. After which, it will be our pastor, uh, the under shepherd of this church, one that God has sent, and we must believe that God sent him. Amen. Amen. Let's serve the amen.
it to God who is the head of all of our lives. If it wasn't for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Not only where would we be, but who would we be? Not our Lord Jesus. This morning is a good day because it's a day that the Lord has made. And we're rejoicing in it because it is He Himself who has made it, and not us. I want to say good morning to our live streamers that are with us. We thank our outstanding media team for making that happen. Thank God for your great gifts. We truly appreciate that. Reminder of the leadership conference. I just want to take note. It is for all the leaders of the church, the chair and vice chair of the different ministries and the special events to be present along with all of our other officers that are part of this church, also the ministerial staff. So we look forward to that on the 25th. I want to thank God for our visitors today. Amen. For God is mighty good. I saw those men that stand. Sister Patricia and I got surprised today with her first cousin. Her husband was like a dear brother to me. Deacon Gregory and Sister Deborah Harris. I'm so glad to have you all from Greenville, South Carolina. Thank you for being here. I want to thank Sister Jane, part of the Holy Grand Card Grove family, for being with us, and all those other visitors that still live. And I just want to say, God is good. Yeah. Won't be a lot of time today. Today is our communion Sunday. But I, I tell you, when you know Jesus, when you really, really know Jesus, it will cause you not to speak the same. It will cause you not to walk the same. It will cause you to be different because you're going to be wanting to be different. But it also will cause you to want to be a little bit closer to Him and be more like Him and not like ourselves. But I just want to say this morning, I'm grateful because we all are back here together again. I look further back and I see Sister Mahalia. It's just so good to see you. But this morning, I'm often given just a word of encouragement. And I haven't done a chuck in a while. And I just wanted to share one with you today about, it's called the Impressive Colonel. Colonel that wants to impress. This Colonel was sitting in his office, and as he's seated there, he's a, he's a pompous Colonel. The new person just been placed in position. And there's an airman that knocks on his door, and as he's trying to impress the airman, he picks up the phone, even though there's no one on the other end. And he tells the airman to come on in, and as the airman entered into the room, he tells him, hold on for a minute, I'm speaking with the general. He said, yes sir, general, I will make sure he gets the message. I will see him sometime later today. He said, I just want to thank you for calling. He felt so good about impressing this airman, calling his big shot moment. And he asked the airman, how can I help you today? He said, sir, I'm here. It's really not that important. I'm just here to hook your phone system up. <laughs> so a lot of times when you're trying to impress somebody, you better be careful with that because you just don't know what you're saying or what you're doing. That God is here to allow them to come back into the place. When we get to communion, I just want to share a story we're going to hold to communion time about what this day is really all about. But if you have your word, if you can go to Acts, the ninth chapter, and verses 1 through 6, Acts, verse chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. And if you don't have the word on you, our team has made sure, the media team, that you have it on the wall, that you can read from the wall. We 
thank God for Reverend Earlene Beach making it back safely. She gave a praise report about her daughter. God is working things out. Amen. And that's Acts, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, And Saul, yet breathing, out threatens and slaughtered against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, and said, If he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told to thee what thou must do. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, always, always you. There's nothing about us that will impress another if you're not in our lives. So God, we ask as words are spoken, as heart is lifted, as mind is focused on you, that there's just a nugget that these individuals can take with them, knowing that God is able, knowing that God is real, and knowing that we surrender all at your feet. I ask you to use me, Lord. Hold me up as Reverend William Beach has already prayed, as the hands of Reverend William Beach has been laid upon me, but more so your congregation, Lord, that has entrusted me. So we thank you today, Jesus. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Ushers, you can go ahead and be seated. I want to say this week has been a week of watching God at his best. Amen. This week has been a week where we see God's presence all around us. And I, I do, last week I had mentioned to you all, I appreciate the courtesy gear, what they had done last week in reference to Sister Nellie Smith, making sure she executed out here safely. But I really meant the courtesy, not the courtesy of the nursing guild was the one. The courtesy guild still be in Greek, but the nursing guild will be readily available. I, I, I do want to thank you. I had already given the ushers and all those others accolades, but I wanted to make sure you got yours. And Reverend McWhorter, thank you when I was gone on vacation. You watched over the sick and shut, and I got nothing but praise reports from those that said that you covered them, and I thank you. And Mr. Jameez said, get ready, get ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for what God has in store for us. But today, reading the book of Acts, and God had worked with me in the beginning of the week. And as you are preparing for God's word, God will elevate that word and season that word as you get closer to that day. And today I want to speak to you all about lane changers. L-A-N-E. Lane changers. You know, the book of Acts is such a crafty book, such a book of origin in reference to the beginning of the Christian faith. The book of Acts, where you will find where our beloved brother Stephen is martyred. The beloved book of Acts is you will see the day of Pentecost. You will see where Peter was once who he was, and God did a magnificent orchestration of his great work in Peter and all those other disciples. Yes, sir. But the book of Acts is also about Apostle Paul. And before he became Paul, you know he was Saul. A lot of people think when he was on the road to Damascus, that's when he changed to the name of Paul. That's not true. All right. Paul didn't come until later. He was still Saul, and God had to work with him had to mold him and had to 
prepare him for what was ahead. Just like God had to do with us. A lot of times when we go through the process, it doesn't feel going, going through it. But when you get through it, you watch the greatness of what God does. When we take the role of a Christian, it's more than a notion. It's accountability. It's the willingness. And it's the acceptance that, God, I cannot do anything that's worth doing without you. We find where Apostle Paul at that time, we will call him Saul, we see him traveling. He is on a mission to bound women and men. And he doesn't care. Whoever say that they are a Christian, they love Jesus, he is bound to destroy them. Have you ever been told to stay in your lane? Have you ever been told that you need to change your lane? Paul is in a place and he's traveling on a road to Damascus. He's, he's on a road that leads to destruction. But I always know this. If you're in the wrong lane right now, just in case if you are, you, if you're willing, you will see Jesus along the way and he will tell you to change your lane. Oh yeah, he, he will tell you that because we know a lot of accidents that we encounter every day is because of people not paying attention on the road and they swiftly changing lanes. There are those that when you're on the freeway, some people are inside the lanes like myself. I love driving next to that medium. So Patricia's that one on the right side say, stay on the right side just in case if something happened to the car, you'll be right on the right side of the lane. But then you have those that love to go in the middle. They need the hot or cold. They're just in the middle because they just feel safe just traveling straight down the lane. We find that many accidents, people fail to put on their sick. You ever allow someone to get in the lane that you're being gracious and they move over to your lane and you would throw up a hand and say thank you? And you may send yourself, I should have let them go in the first place. <laughs> but when you allow them to travel in that lane, you allow them to do so because your heart just says somebody got to let them get over into the lane. Right? And what's amazing when you see people, and I love to see it happen every time, when people are flying by and skirting through a lane on a regular road and they ain't gonna get caught by the same red light. <laughs> it always happens. You got some of those that go past the light and you say, where are the police when I need them? <laughs> you know, we do that. We, we, we do that in reference to trying to understand when do you shift from your lane. All right. Yes, sir. We find that Relationship. Sometimes we're in the wrong lane with the relationship. We want to drive that thing to the end when we know it's doomsday for us. There are times when you just got to face what's before you and say, the road I'm traveling is just not working. Because if you're on a road that is really working, you will see some type of progression. In the meetings that I have with many that are in training, we often talk about we want to be in the right place, doing the right things, living the right way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, it, it is true. There is no one, not one that is righteous before us. There's only one. That, that is Jesus. But we try for righteousness. Yes, we try to do right. Yes. We try to speak right and live right way. Every time you do, you got to remember the devil knows your lane. He knows how to get you right. I had one individual tell me, sometimes I just got to pray. I got to pray when I'm on the road because sometimes, Pastor, I got to hold myself. And then he said, I realize I got to just give it to God. Paul is in a place in time when Jesus. Presented said, because he does acknowledge the Lord. He knows that person that's before him has a great presence. He doesn't start out saying, Jesus. He said, Who are you, Lord? 
Lord. Yeah. Not knowing that it's the Almighty God, but just Lord. Because for a bright light to come before your face, that would be something powerful. Yeah. But I love our God. He represented us well. He called it out. He said, it is our Jesus. Why does that abuse and persecute us then? In this road that we travel, if you're in the right lane, you should not want to persecute your brothers and sisters. Amen. You should want to see them built up. You should want to see them encouraged. You want to see them be the best that they can be. Amen. And you should pray that they want the same for you. Amen. There are two reasons to change the lane while driving. One is because we have someone slow in front of you and just, see, just can't stand you. you gotta get in front of them. <laughs> or you have fast people behind you just right on your tail. Another one is that you got a turn that's ahead and you need to make that turn quickly. You need to make a U turn. You're more comfortable on the other side of the road. Or there's construction that's being done. Or you may have one of those drunk drivers that you encounter and you just want to get out of their way. Or somebody behind you is texting and texting and you want to say, they're not paying attention. I want to get out of their way just in case of an accident. Or there's water on the road. Or too much seems too far ahead that you just can't wait to get there. There's an unsafe lane. You know there is. The unsafe lane is in our life when we're talking about our spiritual lanes now. I remember the great Individual Gloria Mayfield Banks had this great thing to say. Leap off the fence of indecision. Get out of the want to lane and put yourself in the got to lane. A lot of times we're in a lane and we know that we got to change because it requires such. I tell you about changes no matter what guilt is charged. Changes bring about different emotions. If good change or bad, you're still going to have some anxiety because it's uncommon to you. Yes, but if you trust in God, no matter what is before you, you know that God will see you through. Yes. 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 Nobody likes to be on the lane of sickness when your body is breaking down or you can't do what you used to do or you're just trying to get all your numbers right with the doctor. You know, when we get a certain age, I, I love the youth. They can go all day long not be checked by the doctor just for the physical. All right. We go to the doctor, they want to check everything. <laughs> they want to ask you too about any family members have any history of such. <laughs> Next thing you know, they're going to say you have this and that. Come on. We're laying down a prescription medication. Come on. Man. <laughs>
Are you an individual know that when you get to a gas pump, you know it's one of the you see this other person coming around the corner, and you all face each other, see who's going to get there first? <laughs> Are you the one just to bow out and say, go right ahead? All right. All right. Are you like Sister Dr. Joanna Sellers this morning when I was coming into the parking lot? And she was getting ready to walk across, and she said, oh, that's my pastor, said, go ahead. <laughs> Are you the kind that's ever going to let pastor hit me and see if he has any insurance? <laughs> you, you, you determine when your mindset is doing that turn. You know what the difficulty about changing the lane also? We always want to think that our lane is right. <laughs> Our way and all yours is right. The only right way is Jesus. <laughs> See, you may be the left, but I may be the right, but in the middle is Jesus. Because he's the one that tells us to draw ourselves to him. Yes. Yes. I ask you the first thing I want you to peck into your heart. What lane are you in spiritually? All right. Spiritually, where are you? Because it is 1 Timothy 4 and 1 that says, now the Spirit speaking expressly. And in the latter time, some shall depart from their faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil. You got to know the devil wants you. You got to know you are much desired. Now, when you're on his team, he's okay. He don't need you. He said, you already playing his game, but those that are willing to walk right and be straightforward and to be honest and true, those that say, I don't like the lane I'm in right now, I gotta do better, I gotta get up. I gotta be focused, I gotta let it be about Jesus, not about us. When you get in that lane, you will find yourself moving like you never thought you would. But what you realize is not you moving, it's Jesus moving. The lane that Saul was in, God mattered because God had an interest in Saul. If those people that tell you you'll never be nothing, your mama wasn't nothing, your dad wasn't, and you just fall in the same line, you need to tell them, you got my dad all mixed up. Because my father is Jesus. My father told me that if I am in him, he is in me, and more in me, with him being there, than he that is in the world. For being my father and showing me the right way. It is vital that we be obedient as children because you will find in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 14 through 16, it talks about us being obedient as children. It talks about us falling into the line with God. See, God, Bible is the blueprint, but that's also the lane in which we're supposed to be walking. Nobody want to be called out. I don't want to be called out. Uh -huh. But when Jesus has called your name, you got to answer. Uh -huh. Deacons don't need to be in deacons if you can't walk in the lane. Right. Mothers don't need to be in mothers if you can't yeah. praise in the lane. Right. Remember, there's no need to say that you live the life of a Christian right. if you're not willing to walk in the lane. Right. Oh, we all stumble. We all lean. Yes, but one thing I know he will sustain us when nobody else will sustain us. He will give to us when nobody wants to give. He will talk to us when everybody else 
The next point I want you to scratch in. Come on now. Where's your lane leading you? Where is it leading you? You know, being a leader is not an easy job. Being a leader, you're going to find yourself that everybody won't be happy with you.